There we go. Oh yeah. Mm. Hi, welcome back to Low Energy Videos. Um, I guess go Huskers. Uh, before I begin this low energy tasting, I just want to say big shout out to the Beer Club. .ie. Now, I'm going to make this abundantly clear, I am not sponsored by the Beer Club. Uh, but I live out in the middle of, well not quite the middle of nowhere, but it's getting to the middle of nowhere. It's on the road to the middle of nowhere, and I'm sure there's a song in that somewhere. And choices on a lot of things are limited. Not terrible, I mean, they do change over time, but for the most part, it's limited. But with the Beer Club, whose link will be in the description, and whose logo you see on the damn thumbnail of this video, uh, you get a massive collection of drink. Craft beers and uh, imports from all over Ireland and a huge chunk of the world as well. Uh, the choice is just mind-blowing. Every time I go there, I will see the bulk of their stock completely shifted and change. Um, on top of that, they do uh, a club, as in like a you can join, where you can have um, tastings on, I think it's a Tuesday on Twitter, a live feed, and gift, pa uh, gift backs and such. Uh, monthly subscriptions or you can uh, even make your own they have their your home or their own brewing kit but one thing they don't mention in the ad is just how friendly and helpful the staff have been this is my third order i think now and it might be that my fourth actually and the staff is just always been so helpful. Um, whenever they don't have something in stock that's on my list, they'll be more than happy to suggest an alternative or just give me the refund. Um, if you want anything to go with the drink you've had, say a, a meal or even a snack, they can line up something for you that as well. They also do the occasional snack as well with the hampers, Chris, chocolate and the like. Um, I think I even saw cheese there once, but don't hold me on that. But for anyone in Ireland uh, who is watching this, by all means, I'd, re I'd check them out. Because they are fantastic, and I am more than likely going to be doing another one of these again, and I am definitely going to be ordering from them again. With that out of the way, I just want to make this real quick. Because my camera, it, my phone in particular, is what I'm filming on. And I'm going to have to edit once the battery, not the battery, the memory runs out. I tried to get an SD card, but I just couldn't this week for a lot of different reasons. Week after next, maybe, or something like that. But for now, I can't. So, you're going to see the occasional edits. I'll try to keep it even. But I have 11 beers here. So, this is going to be a fair bit longer than the last one. But the same rule to apply. I've got two glasses here. I'm going to fill up, not fill them up, but pour out an equivalent. Have that. Make my opinion. Palette cleanser. And then I'll probably edit. But I might edit at different times. None of that matters. Because I'm looking at uh, a skyline of beauty over here. <laughs> Uh, I tried to get 12, they didn't have it, uh, they didn't, uh, I just decided that I didn't want 12 for whatever reason, maybe I thought it was too much or something, I mean I'm going out tomorrow, I've got another video lined up tomorrow, oh and you can't see behind it but it's very overcast, that doesn't bode well for a stroll up, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to do it, anyway, let's, uh, let's wrap this up, so, edit, so, First up, I have, is I think the Grand Poobah of them all. Not so much for flavour, but just badassery. The Ballast Point, dedicated to the craft. 
I West. Barrel aged victory at sea. Look at how metal this is. It's pirate captain in a storm. He's also a skeleton. Uh, Imperial Porter with coffee and vanilla flavors, aged in High West bourbon and rye barrels. Ooh, so the same stuff they make bourbon with. Oddly enough, the, ba the bottles were sticky. Maybe there was a spill at the factory or something, but a little bit clammy. Try one of these ones. No, just this one. Um, one thing I want to point out about this, 12%. It's also a porter, and I'm not the biggest porter fan, as you might recall. But, I can always appreciate a good porter, and something tells me this is going to be a very good porter. Now. Oh, it smells lovely. It smells like a, it smells like a coffee cake that's kind of been blended in with vanilla. Mmm. Let's see about... See how it has kind of more of a head than the last one? I mean, Guinness is just pure... Ooh, it's this whole place now is just smelling lovely, so sweet. Um, I actually expected the bottle to be a little bit bigger. I suppose if they made it bigger at 12%. Ooh, <laughs> that's approaching wine levels. Mmm, smells lovely. But it is still porter slash stout, so... Um, not altogether bad, but you can taste the alcohol. I was expecting all those nice flavors would overwhelm it, but woo, that is, that is potent. You wouldn't have more than one of them. <laughs> That's almost like a sort of like, just a have to say that you've had. I'm definitely keeping the bottle. That's going up there in my uh, collection. This is pretty. <laughs> Ballast point. Dedicated to the craft. Let's see, where is Ballast Point at? Is it UK? Most of these, uh, California. America. Oh, sorry, it's California, so America. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Big shout out to any Cali folk. Yeah, I, I would recommend this for anyone who's a dedicated uh, porter stout drinker. Who wants to get shit faced? Because even after, yeah, if you have the whole bottle, then afterwards you don't actually have enough taste. Oh, it's strong. I mean, like the flavors do their best to hide the alcohol, but it just punches right through it. That's a man's drink, son, or a woman's, or anyone's. They just have to be aware of it and respect its power. As you always should do with alcohol. Right. I'm going to pick it random. Bloop, 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 bloop. And we get... Ah. Brewdog. Knotbuster. I like these guys. I've had tons of their types before. I don't think I've ever had a Knotbuster before. Look at... Uh, I'm sure he has a name. I always call him like Siegfried or something. He has a German vibe to him. Shows up on a lot of their stuff. Yellow Belly versus Brewdog. Ooh. Now, Brewdog makes my favorite IPA that you can find on tap. Uh, particularly in Fibbers. Oh, look! He's at the head of a werewolf army or a dog army. That's badass. Um, never get to see who he's fighting. They're, that's cool, but if they're fighting this guy, this guy's gonna win. He has the power of darkness at his back. Now there's a now there's a a game I'd play. Okay, so black currant and hearty honey. Ooh, this is gonna be one. It says kettle sour. Um, one pant pant cronard. Okay, R. Yellowberry from Wexford, Ireland. Go Ireland. Now, um, it's 
got a lot of uh, that's all this stuff about how it's made. Sometimes it has stories on the back. I gotta move this along for the sake of memory. Okay, I'm not getting much of a smell. Actually, I am, and it's not the most pleasant. I can smell a little bit of blackcurrant. Okay. Okay. That has a sort of Copperberg mixed fruit vibe to it in look. Except that doesn't have much of any of a head. That was probably the blackcurrant part, but also honey as well. I know honey mead is blowing up across the world. I'm not a fan of mead. And I do like honey, but not all, not in everything. So, I'm a little bit wary of this one. But we're going to give it a shot. Yeah, the smell does not win it for me. Ooh, it's an interesting flavour though. I'll have a list of um I'll have a list of uh in order what I do. Because some of these I'm sure people can pick up if they like the look of it. This is very sour. And I like that. I I'm I'm a bit of a fan of sour. Not like sort of sour, but a tang to it that resonates in the back of your tongue. And it has this. It has this in droves. Mm. The honey part I don't think is doing any favours. But it would need to be there. I think it's um, for, the, uh, for the sour part. But the thing is the blackcurrant... What you should do is, you should have, well, I think you should have done I'm a brewer. But because the the honey doesn't really add anything, it kind of takes away a little bit. It's kind of too grounded a flavour. While the blackcurrant is non-existent almost, but it has to be there because I'm getting a, a very fruity taste that's trying to counteract the, uh, the sour. It actually looks like a sort of soury, sour, soury, soury. Got him that drunk already, huh? Well, that was 12%. Um, it kind of looks like sour uh, gummy bears or something like that. It's gummies and like... Anyway. I'm going to edit this now. And then um, I'll be back for the next two. Right. Next on the list. Not picking randomly this time. Because this was actually what I wanted to get for this whole thing. And I forgot to delete the stuff, so I've only got five minutes to film at least this one, and I'll delete the others. Um, here. Strawberry Vanilla Shake from Rascals Brewing Company, which I've had before. Citra and Mosaic Hops. Soft, cloudy and creamy milkshake beer. Unfiltered, unpastured. Damn right, Dublin Brewery. I need to find out where some of these breweries are so I can go on tours. And you know I'd bring you guys along. Our story. Rascals brew beer to inspire adventurous palates. Well, that's me. Which is weird because my food palate is not adventurous at all. Um, we create popular beer styles with our own award-winning Rascal twist. So crack open a can because everyone loves a Rascal. <laughs> this can is about as rascally as Spongebob when he wanted to be hardcore. <laughs> But I just love the idea of it. A, a, a strawberry vanilla shake. I'm a goofy goober, yeah. You're a goofy goober, yeah. Lovely smell, but... I can smell, uh, I can smell the citra, anyway. But I don't smell much in the way of the, uh, the strawberry. That was a poor pour on my part. A poor pour, if you will. But, yeah, it's an IPA, so it's definitely got pluses there for me. It's my currently my favourite type of beer. It used to be Bach, but now it's not. Mmm, it has the freshness smell of it, but, well, I'm not here to smell it. Or am I? If 
I am, that would just be terrible on your part. Of course, you can't drink these either. <laughs> or can you? Beerclub.ie. Check it out. much going on there at all. Tastes like an IPA, but I'm not tasting anything else. Oh, by the way, this is 5%. I forget what the... Oh, 6.2. That, that last one I did was 6.2. This is 5%. So you wouldn't kick it out of bed. It's a bit better than a Budweiser. This is a bit underwhelming for what you expect. I mean, let's give that a fair shake. No, no. It it should have a lot more going on. I mean, look at it. I was expecting those, um, you know, those hard candies that are like um, spirals that have cream, uh, have cream flavor and uh, like raspberry flavor. And you just start like, oh, it's just coloring and you're biting and you're like, what the fuck? Why is there suddenly a carnival in my mouth? This can tells you that. But uh, it's a bit disappointing. I was honestly expecting this to be the... Uh, the fun cookie equivalent of that uh, uh, victory at sea, which, by the way, I think is a reference to Oglaf. If anyone knows what Oglaf is, blood and glory, or is it blood and honor? I forget which. Blood and honor, victory at sea. Uh, references. Okay, I'm going to go now and um, sort this out. Sorry about the immediate edit again. And next on my list is, and I will pick randomly, a bottle this time. What's that? Bo uh, boa Hopper. Boa Hopper. Snake, uh, snaky One IPA. Produced in Donegal. Place I've always wanted to go visit. 5.3. Wheat, barley, hops, yeast. Oh, it's pretty straightforward. Oh shit! Brewed and bottled in Bolly Hopper Brewery, Unit Six, Kildare, Muff. That's my eyes. There you go. Muff. All right. Straightforward. It has a sort of tunnel snakes vibe to it. Tunnel snakes rule. I'll be playing Fallout after this, like about half an hour after this video. This one is an IPA again, which is cool, and a little bit more potent than that strawberry let down. By the way, that wasn't bad. It was just nowhere near as flavoursome as I thought it would be. I'm not really smelling much. Uh, I'm not getting much of anything from this. All right, looks good. Looks a lot darker than the standard one. Of course, that's one reason it would be darker. Hmm. Low taste. All right, all right, no, 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 I, I know where this could fit in. I know where this could fit in. Say you're curious about IPAs, but some things like, say, brew dog have too much kick to them. There's the flavor, took it long enough. Um, this would be a good starter IPA. The flavor's there at the end. 
IPAs are um, are normally they whack you over the face as you drink them. At least um, stuff from like Brewdog or um, I think Delirium do an IPA as well. Love Delirium. You can get that in in Omaha, Nebraska, in a very cool bar that has video games. Super cheap too. But uh, the uh, the flavour on this one, there's nothing much going on. Which is fine. Like I said, if you wanted to try an IPA for the first time, I would actually suggest this. Um, the Boa Hopper. Okay, well. Now, unfortunately, I've got to edit again. This time only to uh, clean out the glasses. I got a non-pint glass. It's the same time. Right, I'm actually going to pick randomly this time. It's about to grab for one that I remembered, and I'm like, yep, yeah, let's try this. Ah, once again, yellow belly. Ooh, look at Mr. Fancy Pants over here. Being Sherlock Holmes, it's elementary. Oh, yeah. Chinook and Simcoe. Uh, Sasson IPA. I always call it a session. I suppose it is. Um, it's elementary. Ingredients. 4.6, so a bit weaker than the last one. Is that Watson up there in the corner? I don't know if you can see him. And yeah, there he is. <laughs> I do love Yellow Belly's um, cans. A lot of the shit has to come down to cans. I've seen some amazing cans in my life. Uh, drinking. Of course, I'm usually too drunk to remember. <laughs> Ooh. This definitely has a, a much more potent smell than the last one. A lot of IPAs. It's almost as if I like IPA or something. Okay. Well, it's a little bit more livelier than the last one. You can see a little bit more brighter. Mmm. Flavors. The smell is coming alive now. I like the dog in the camera here. He's got his uh, camera, the can. Smooth. Very smooth. For an IPA, that's extremely smooth. Remember what I said in the last one? The flavour usually washes over you. This has been kind of cleared out. Compared to that one... That I had last, the Boa Hopper, which just didn't have anything. This has been replaced with a more of a, well, more of a smooth flavour, which is nice. This is a, you could drink this. Well, I'm obviously drinking it, but I mean, you could drink this and not really think about it much. As for the flavours itself... Mm, again, other than the IPA-ish, it's not much going on. It does have a nice aftertaste that I can't quite place. But it's consumable. Like, it's consumable in vast quantities. Only problem I have to say is, at 4.6, you can do better. If you want an IPA, you don't want a light... IPA. You want a strong or at least a mid-tier IPA. This is 4.6. This is Budweiser territory and Heineken in terms of strength. No, no, you can do better than that in terms of strength. But uh, the, the flavor itself, it's solid. It's solid. Right. I'm going to grab a bottle now. Huh? <laughs> I like this. La, how do you say that? La... La Guintia's little something. Little something for you there, honey. Mm-hmm. Even love the feel of the label. It has a sort of... Ooh, shit. Um, so we're all on collective disability. That's cool. Let's put ice on and keep ourselves elevated for a while. So what's on the tube? Honey, get me a beer from the fridge, will you, sweetie? Please. <laughs> what? Beer speak, people mumble. Uh, 
Uh, that's def Oh, I like this. This is a lot of character in it. Um, who made it? That's English first. Cali, another Cali beer. The Guantia's Brewing Company. Um, it was imported by Heineken. Uh, where's the percentage? Oh, it's it's also County and Chicago. So yeah, no wonder. Uh, seven point five. It's got a, it's got a spine in its back. That's for sure. There is something trying to come through, but it's not, um, and I think it's sweet, but it's not, uh, something very pronounced. Okay. Does it actually say you want to, it's an ale. I do like me some ale. I used to love red ale from uh, the north of England, as um, James May once said, with bits of turf floating in it. <laughs> Proper ale, that is. Fuck that mead shit. Oh, no, no, there's definitely a flavour once you put, uh, smell once you pour it out. And yeah, it's sweet. In particular, I'm smelling like berries, fruits, things like that. But not citrus. Which I know berries and all that. Alright, enough. Uh-huh. Oh. Takes a while to kick in, but it does. I know, I should have... Hands me palette, my bad. Big old cleanse, not a little pussy-fied cleanse. Sorry, I almost disrespected this particular bit. That's, that's a lively motherfucker right there. That is, um, it's drinkable. Again, that means, like, you can knock a few of these back, no problem. But it wouldn't let you, uh, forget it until you're well down the rabbit hole. If you were completely shit-faced, you'd have to deal with, um... You, you wouldn't even be noticing anymore because it doesn't have like the strength of that 12%. It's still the second strongest one here. But that is, that's all right. That's a proper ale that is. Uh, or at least a light, uh, a light colored ale. So that ain't a sipping beer. It should be sipped because, you know, it's potent. At least at the beginning. You don't want to end your night an hour into it. Like some people do. Like I might have done from time to time. You need to pace that shit out. Ooh, burp, burp. My first major burp of the evening. And boy, do the hops want to remind me what they are. Okay, one more and then we get our edits. This time around, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it very different. Trouble Brewing. Ireland's really wants you to know its premier craft brewery. At least in Dublin, everyone knows about Trouble Brewing. The, the ads are everywhere. And this is Ambush. Juicy Pale Ale. Steffler, how are you enjoying the pale ale? <laughs> um, I like Trouble Brewery a lot. They've got a lot of character to them. I imagine it's really fun in, say, the, um, the advertisement. Uh the advertisement uh, department, but I've never had an ambush before. I actually knew someone who ended up uh, going working for them. He used to work in bar, uh, 
the uh, Merchant's Arch up in Dublin by Hapney Bridge. I knew a guy who worked there. And uh, one day he came over and uh, told me that he was in talks with them. Oh, sorry, he was going to Porterhouse first, which is a big bar chain. Like, there's only three or four of them in Dublin, but it has a reputation of, like, everyone loves it. Everyone always talks about it. Um, and then I found out later on he went to work for Trouble Brewery. I think as a taster, which is cool. We used to talk so much about craft beer. That's when I was back getting into craft beer. No, even... That was my second craft bar. There was a place before that. Right. So, Ambush. Juicy IPA Ale. Brewed in... Kildare. Malt. They use one, two, three, four... It's five malts and... Five hops. Independent craft beer. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing's going so. There's no story of it anyway. It's uh, five point five point one. That's an odd number. No, I don't like that. Oh, it's like they got a uh, they got an, an ale like the one I just had, and then they add a little bit of water to it. They added the uh, concentrated orange juice to it. Oh no! Oh no! 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 I gotta give it a fair shake. Gotta give it a fair shake. And I'm running out of time, so sorry if I look like I'm rushing because I am. No. No, it's um, it definitely is juicy. It's not even orange juice. It's more like I got a non-pint glass. It's the same time, right? I'm actually gonna pick randomly this time. It's about to grab for one that I remembered, and I'm like, yep, yeah, let's try this. Ah, once again, yellow belly. Ooh, look at Mr. Fancy Pants over here. Being Sherlock Holmes, it's elementary. Oh yeah. Chinook and Simcoe. Uh, Sasson IPA, I always call it a session. I suppose it is. Um, it's elementary. Ingredients. 4.6, so a bit weaker than the last one. Is that Watson up there in the corner? I don't know if you can see him. And yeah, there he is. I do love Yellow Belly's um, cans. A lot of the shit has to come down to cans. I've seen some amazing cans in my life. Uh, drinking. Of course, I'm usually too drunk to remember. Ooh. This definitely has a, a much more potent smell than the last one. A lot of IPAs. It's almost as if I like IPA or something. Okay, well, it's a little bit more livelier than the last one. You can see a little bit more brighter. Mmm, flavors, the smell's coming alive now. I like the dog in the camera here. He's got his uh, camera, the can. Smooth. Very smooth. For an IPA, that's extremely smooth. Remember what I said in the last one? The flavour usually washes over you. This has been kind of cleared out. Compared to that one that I had last, the Boa Hopper, which just didn't have anything. This has been replaced with a more of a... Well, more of a smooth flavour. Which is nice. This is a... You could drink this. Well, I'm obviously drinking it, but I mean, you could drink this and not really think about it much. I 
as for the flavours itself, mm, again, other than the IPA-ish, it's not much going on. It does have a nice aftertaste that I can't quite place. But it's consumable. Like it's consumable in vast quantities. Only problem I have to say is, at 4.6, you can do better. If you want an IPA, you don't want a light IPA. You want a strong, or at least a mid-tier IPA. This is 4.6. This is Budweiser territory and Heineken in terms of strength. No, no, you can do better than that. In terms of strength. But uh, the, the flavour itself, it's solid. It's solid. Right. I'm going to grab a bottle now. <laughs> I like this. La, how do you say that? La, La Guintia's little something. Little something for you there, honey. Mm-hmm. Even love the feel of the label. It has a sort of... Ooh, shit. Um, so we're all on collective disability. That's cool. Let's put ice on and keep ourselves elevated for a while. So what's on the tube? Honey, get me a beer from the fridge, will you, sweetie? Please. <laughs> what? Beer speak, people mumble. Uh, uh, that's def Oh, I like this. This is a lot of character in it. Um, who made it? That's English first. Cali. Another Cali beer. The Guantia's Brewing Company. Um... It was imported by Heineken. Uh, where's the percentage? Oh, it's it's also County and Chicago. So, yeah, no wonder. Uh, 7.5. It's, it's got a spine in its back, that's for sure. There is something trying to come through, but it's not, um, and I think it's sweet, but it's not, uh, something very pronounced. Okay. Does it actually say you want to, it's an ale. I do like me some ale. I used to love red ale from uh, the north of England, as um, James May once said, with bits of turf floating in it. <laughs> Proper ale, that is. Fuck that mead shit. Oh, no, no, there's definitely a flavour once you put, uh, smell once you pour it out. And yeah, it's sweet. In particular, I'm smelling like berries, fruits, things like that. But not citrus. I'm sorry, not berries. Alright, enough. Uh-huh. Oh. Takes a while to kick in, but it does. I know, I should have. Hands me palette, my bad. Big old cleanse, not a little pussyfied cleanse. Sorry, I almost disrespected this particular bit. That's, that's a lively motherfucker right there. That is, um, it's drinkable. Again, that means, like, you can knock a few of these back, no problem. But it wouldn't let you, uh, forget it until you're well down the rabbit hole. If you were completely shit-faced, you'd have to deal with, um... You, you wouldn't even be noticing anymore because it doesn't have like the strength of that 12%. It's still the second strongest one here. But that is, that's all right. That's a proper ale, that is. 
uh, or at least a light uh, a light coloured ale. So that ain't a sipping beer. It should be sipped because you know it's potent. At least at the beginning, you don't want to end your night an hour into it, like some people do. I might have done from time to time. You need to pace that shit out. Ooh, burp, burp. My first major burp of the evening. And boy, do the hops want to remind me what they are. Okay, one more and then we get our edits. This time around, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it very different. Trouble Brewing. Ireland's really wants you to know its premier craft brewery. At least in Dublin, everyone knows about Trouble Brewing. The, the ads are everywhere. And this is Ambush. Juicy Pale Ale. Steffler, how are you enjoying the pale ale? <laughs> um, I like Trouble Brewery a lot. They've got a lot of character to them. I imagine it's really fun in, say, the, um, the advertisement. Uh the advertisement uh, department, but I've never had an ambush before. I actually knew someone who ended up uh, going working for them. He used to work in bar, uh, the uh, Merchant's Arch up in Dublin by Hapney Bridge. I knew a guy who worked there. And uh, one day he came over and uh, told me that he was in talks with them. Oh, sorry, he was going to Porterhouse first, which is a big bar chain like there's only three or four of them in Dublin but it has a reputation of like everyone loves it everyone always talks about it um and then I found out later on he went to work for Trouble Brewery I think as a taster which is cool we used to talk so much about craft beer that's when I was back getting into craft beer no even that was my second craft bar there was a place before that Right, so Ambush, Juicy IPA Ale, brewed in Kildare, malt, they use one, two, three, four, it's five malts and five hops, independent craft beer, mm -hmm. um, the thing's going, so, there's no story of it anyway, it's uh, 5.1, 5. 5. that's an odd number. No, oh, I don't like that. Oh, it's like they got a uh, they got an, an ale like the one I just had, and then they add a little bit of water to it. They added the uh, concentrated orange juice to it. Oh no! Oh no! 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 I gotta give it a fair shake. Gotta give it a fair shake. And I'm running out of time, so sorry if I look like I'm rushing because I am. No. No, it's um, it definitely is juicy. It's not even orange juice. It's more like mango. I um, I uh, was cleaning up in there, and Metal Monkey get it came in to have a a smoke and a cup of tea, and I shot. I had him smell the uh, very first one, the Victory at Sea, and he he actually did say it smelled like uh. The rum chocolates you get in um, Quality Street. Now, I was always more of a rose person myself, but yeah, I can kind of see it. Right, so I've got four left here. Don't have much time. This hopefully is the last of my edits until maybe at the end where I give another shout out to uh, the club that allowed all this to happen. So... This is the one and only white. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Um, the White Hag Irish Brewing Company in cahoots with Brutonic. 
Elderflower Kettle Sour now. Well, there's a name. Elderflower Kettle Sour. Um, clean up aisle me. Okay, so. White Hag you see everywhere these days. And they're solid enough. I like them. Another Irish company, of course. This one in Sligo. Um, ancient Irish mythology will tell you that the White Hag was a witch, a chameleon creature, and even Mother Nature herself. Uh, and even Mother Nature herself. Well, no, she was all that and more—a spiritual force from uh, and of the earth, the spirit of Ireland, who shaped the form of the land itself, presented in everything through the pure water of the earth. So, earth and fire. But no wind, though, unfortunately. Brutonic is the brewing division of body tonic, responsible for 13 seconds, 420, raspberry, brain, same-sex, saison, uh, to name the few. Pouring at um, the Bernard Shaw Wigwam, MVP, the Black Page, and the Square Ball. Mmm, I don't know. They sound like bars. They sound like a local brewing company, and they do not sound like an Irish brewing company. So they must have done a deal with an English brewing company. Traitors! Oh <laughs> my kidding, I'm a fucking tan. Uh, and if you Americans don't know, ask your mother. Whoa! There's a smell that whacks you in the face. They weren't lying about the uh, sour part anyway. Sour is right. I don't need to clean it, so. It's very soury and it has an aftertaste. I'm not 100% behind, but I will say that it's not entirely unpleasant and someone else might enjoy it. Don't, I need to sip that extra bit because it was, because it's still Mmm, I like me my sour, but this sour does not want to go away. The last sour I had did want to go away. It knew when to stay and knew when to leave. It was a very nice guest I will be very happy to have back. This, mmm, it's a bad tasting. It's just kind of overstaying its welcome to go. And it doesn't leave, it doesn't leave a lasting tingle on the tongue. It kind of just is there briefly. Yeah. Mmm. Ooh, sour as fuck. All right. It's not bad. Again, one of these would be grand. Last bottle. This is the nine pound hammer by. Oh, shit. Don't let me camera phone me. Uh, nine pounds hammer. By Jack, is it Jack Cody? Irish Craft Beers. I have a nice sort of art style. Brewed with fun and pride where we're from. Right with lamb, uh, lamb tangine, smoked cheese, and pizza. Hmm. Okay. I'm up for all those things. Even lamb. I'm starting to get into lamb again. Jack Cody's Brewery, Boyne, Drada. Can't be loud. Drada, it's where you're from. Drada. Um. Oh, I have something different. Water, hops, oats, barley, wheat, rye, dextrose, yeast. Yeast. Mm. Um. Deepa, seven point one percent. Again, with that extra one percent, is that really gonna make all the difference in the world? Someone have um, epic music playing. Sma like cut this and just have it. Bodios, Bodios, Nestos. All right. Man versus bottle. Mmm. 
that's a nice earthy smooth smell very different from the other stuff I've been drinking so for that we need a little bit extra water don't try this at home kids drinking quiet solitude out in a field like I did that's how you get started early baby Terrible pint pouring again. I wasn't paying attention. Mmm. Not a strong but a noticeable smell of, um, I suppose you'd. bread? Brown bread in particular, maybe? But there's a sweetness to it. Almost like cake, in a way. Ooh, now this is a flavor that wants you to know about itself. Right, so, best way to describe this one is... That, uh... Very first drink I had, the, the milk, I, uh, the milk, uh, stout. When it kind of hit your, um, hit your mouth, it kind of... Sort of wraps itself around your tongue this does that but it's not so invasive remember what I said about the, the a drink being noticeable and unnoticeable this is noticeable if you've just walked in and ordered this for the very first time but if say you've been drinking all day but not drunk, just have been bouncing a pint after a pint and a pint and want to try something different. You might say that, well I've got something else to say about it I guess, and it's not good. Um, you might say that it's very strong, but not so strong as to be like, whoa, Jesus. You could kind of occasionally sip from it and eventually you wouldn't notice a thing but there is something else as well it doesn't go down well maybe it's because everything else I've had I don't know gassy motherfuckers very gassy but when I went down there all this was like <laughs> do you like stomach acid because you're gonna get stomach acid mm. flavor is perfectly fine and very welcoming, actually. Very welcoming flavour. It becomes something else after a while. Mm. Bit of a Trojan horse, that one. I wouldn't say avoid, but be wary of the goat. Now, we've only got two left. These two. I like the feel of this can, but more importantly, I love this. Look at it. Look at that, motherfucker. I want that tattooed on a girl's ass. A very trashy girl. Oh, the, what, what's the trashy name in America? Uh, Courtney. Yeah. Um, Beaver Town. Double chin. Double neck oil. Mm. Well, I don't have the double chin because I've been losing weight. But I do have neck oil after I've been running to help me lose the weight. Double IPA. Originally brewed on our fourth birthday to celebrate great um, beer and the people who made it. They, they have the, as the same word. and You can see it there. It's a bit of a typo. You can't see it. But, um... Beer and... Yeah. Chocolatey good. Beaver Town, double chin, double neck, IP. 8.6. Holy shit. Town is Irish, is it? It's UK. Yeah, I had a film, it was UK.
Hmm. It's an IPA, of course, and it's um gonna be have a kick to it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wrap this up. Ooh, now this is smooth. I like this. I like this a lot. Little bit of an aftertaste, an IPA aftertaste, but it hits you like a Sasson, actually. When it comes in, it does hit you like a Sasson. I would definitely have this. Sorry if I'm really wrapping this up. It's just... Well, as you can tell, my camera is... Terrible in terms of memory. I got what about fifteen minutes. Um, here's the last one. That, by the way, is just good. It's just good. Right. Hopped in space, yellowberry. Just good old fashioned IPA. I'm not gonna lie. I'm almost certain I've had this before. It's good old fashioned yellowberry. Here is the uh, picture. He's in space. What's it? What did I call him? Siegfried. Siegfried in space. Five point nine. So it's nothing to sniff at. Just gonna sniff it. Mmm. Has a full body smell to it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, there's a niceness to it. Keep forgetting to do this. Yeah. yeah. That is actually remember what I said earlier about an IPA being uh, the the boa being like your introduction to IPA. Hot in space is could very well be your standard IPA. There's less of a flavour than I would like, but at the same time, I really really enjoy this. It's smooth. It's easily drinkable. It's got a kick to it. That would probably justify the price. Uh, if you had it on tap, which would be a lot more expensive than the stuff left and right to it. But, uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this one. I really am. So, that's a fun way to wrap up. Let me edit out one more time, and we can talk over there. Over there is a place. Where I am not at. I will be after this. Hey, I decided to wrap it up in here because I was done with the drinking, at least for now. That's going to drive me crazy. And, ugh, need to fix that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, first things first, big prop out one more time to Beer Club. Uh, like I said, at the start of the video, they have been nothing but help. And I also want to say their prices are fair. Craft beer is not something you're going to go into if you only have five quid in your pocket. Unless you know a place that will give out a sampler or something like that. But Beer Club's prices are pretty damn solid. I have... At the end of it, every time I've looked at the, the total, and as you can tell, I usually buy big bulk. That's why it's such an occasion for me. Some people don't need to. You don't need to. I think uh, 12 euro is the uh, minimum, which isn't too bad. Um, but for me, whenever I work with them, I get nothing, nothing but support. So to everyone who works in Beer Club, you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. Uh, now that that's done, I will be editing the video then I will get ready 
and hopefully in an hour, maybe, maybe an hour and a half, maybe even less, we'll see. I am going to be live uh, for a live streaming of Fallout. I'm flipping a coin on my head between Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3. Point is, shooty shooty, because, um, well, why the fuck not? It's more interesting when you've had a few drinks in you. So, to anyone who's watching this, hope you've enjoyed this. I will be at, at the very least doing another one of these next month. Um, but I might do another tasting test like far sooner, and it doesn't need to be alcohol. If you have a suggestion, and you know I can cure it, by all means, comment away. If you like it also, thumbs up. If you didn't like it for whatever reason, and I can understand that, thumbs down. If you aren't a subscriber, by all means, subscribe. I do gaming. I do opinions on shit, I do reaction, which is coming out in the next few days, and tomorrow I am going to be doing a travel log, as in I'm going to be out in the real world. Ooh, scary. Um, but besides that, I game a lot. And if I get enough of a fan base, I'll just have regular vlogs where I'm just talking to you. So... I've had fun, so, yeah, see y'all next time, also, apparently, I have to say this because I'm wearing it, go Huskers or something, I don't know, bye.